So most of the time I spent leveling 270, which took me about 100 hours, was actually charting XP, testing out all the various methods that you can do regularly in the game to determine whether or not one activity is better than another. And I've actually gone ahead and determined the XP per minute for a lot of different activities in the game, and I wanna share that all with you. Obviously, if you don't care and you just wanna enjoy the game, please do so. This game is absolutely beautiful, it's absolutely amazing, and you should absolutely do whatever you want to have fun. If you're interested in reaching that level 100 for personal reasons, then this video is certainly for you. And I wanna talk about all the different methods that will help you reach that goal. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is one to 50. Now, I've made a full video talking about world tier one versus world tier two, but essentially world tier two is gonna be worse for 99% of people unless you are someone that is capable of avoiding a lot of damage and one shutting tier two monsters because this seems to have about a 10 to 15 percent hp increase compared to world tier one so world tier one is going to give you additional xp by just killing things faster so also it'll give you more loot so you play on world tier one as you're starting out if you wish to level quicker now the 1 to 50 process is pretty straightforward and honestly doesn't have much XP grinding methods because guess what? We have to do the campaign because in order for us to get massive XP bonuses and really start to streamline our progression, we have to reach world tier 3 and more importantly, world tier 4 because this is where the XP really starts to ramp up. So in order to do that, we need to finish the Nightmare Dungeon or uh, the Capstone Dungeon and the Storyline. Storyline is very, very important for you to, for us to finish. Now, within that, we are going to get to roughly around 30 to 40, depending on who you are. I myself finished the storyline in the campaign at level 31. So if you just absolutely blast the campaign and don't do anything else but that, I did one other dungeon to pick up my Blade Dancers aspect, then you can get to level 31 at the end of the campaign. Some of the monsters near the end are higher level due to being in a level 45 zone. So that is something you need to consider. And if you're not strong enough, then you might have to do some other dungeons or some other activity to level up a little bit more um, during the process. Now, while you're leveling up and while you're getting through the campaign, there's one other thing to note as when we reach level 50, World Tier 3 is actually gonna be a big step up in difficulty. So for the remainder of 31 to 50, the recommendation is actually to go around the map picking up Alters Lilith, regardless of it being lower XP. And the reason I say this is because I actually did this, and what happened was my power raised extremely high and actually gave me the ability to really push World Tier 3, which increased my XP rates, which I'll show you in a little bit in this video. So Crushing the world, to, uh, the altars will give you extra stats, which will allow you to kind of get those bonus unlocks for the Paragon board, which is very, very critical. And on top of that, actually unlock additional skill points from the Renown system, which will also increase your power. Keep in mind that when we get to World Tier 3, again, it's actually a large step up in difficulty, not comparable to World Tier 1 to 2. That is not even close to the step up between World Tier 2 to 3, and you do need to make sure you're strong enough to be able to do it relatively efficiently. Although you can oftentimes die and still have better XP rates. So after you finished up the altars of Lilith, we still probably won't be quite level 50. And that's where I suggest doing strongholds around the map. And the reason for this is in order for my methods to work on 50 to 100, we're going to need access to almost all the waypoints. But while doing the strongholds, while getting the waypoints, you're gonna get pretty good XP because strongholds typically have very high monster density, but also you're going to be getting renown. So you're really kind of double slash triple dipping in all these different things. And while you're getting all the waypoints, you should roughly end near close to 50. But if you're not 50, we can talk about those methods in our 50 to 100 process. So here's where we dive into the numbers. I have charted several different activities in the game, including dungeons, various open world events, and other things. Now, this isn't all my information, but this is all the stuff that I was able to compile uh, during the time that I spent. And what you'll notice is I have World Tier 3 and World Tier 4 here, and I have some various averages, etc. Now, I'm gonna try to make this pretty simple so you know we can basically go through the information that we need to know. Basically, 
when you're doing dungeons as you approach level 50 you're going to be following the tree of whispers the tree of whispers sends you to various dungeons around the map which is why we want the waypoints earlier therefore my average travel time was around one minute basically consistently i kind of overestimated a little bit just so i can get um a little bit more of an accurate estimate the whisper turning them in took about one minute as well because you need to turn them in to get a bonus xp and bonus loot the open world travel time took about a minute to travel typically as well again this is assuming you have most if not all the waypoints in the game now what we need to track here is which dungeon are we doing how much time did it take and my xp start and my xp end of that dungeon right Keep in mind that none of these areas of the game included an XP potion, so I was not using an XP potion for these ones, which is why I have a smaller sample size than I actually did, because I didn't want to, you know, not use an XP potion. What's also important about this is you'll notice that the level, as you increase the level, your Whisper XP also increased, but your amount of XP you needed drastically increase particularly at break points right from 59 to 60 every 10 levels you get a massive increase in xp uh, that you needed you can see roughly about eh, about five six percent increase all the way uh, continuing onwards right except for those big jumps for example if we pop back over to the game here you can see my xp now is 7.8 million xp is what i need so a massive xp jump compared to you know approximately the uh, 4.3 million that you needed here a big jump when we've reached 70. so the leveling xp that you need jumps drastically and that means approaching level 100 as you get to like level 90 is going to be extremely extremely high now as for the actual methods themselves as i said i charted a bunch of different open world zones and dungeons but what you'll notice here is the average xp for dungeons this is the dungeon category on world tier 3 was about 50k on world tier 4 it was almost double keep in mind that you'll notice i was doing world tier 4 at level 62 and i was doing world tier 3 at level 57 and some of the the ones uh, at level 62 were way better and some of them were way worse it really depends on how good i was at doing these dungeons right because if i died a ton my xp would drop however if i died a little bit it was still way better than world tier three for example this dungeon right here demon's wake you can take out 123k xp per minute even though i died around five or six times in that dungeon which is crazy to me and that is just because you get massively massively increased xp when you're fighting monsters that are way higher level than you um, i believe it's up to 30 percent based on some of the data mines out there as well as you're getting a massive increase in xp period from world tier 4 which is why we want to rush world tier 4 as soon as possible but what you'll also notice is that the open world events particularly the legion events the legion events oftentimes had the best xp rates assuming and this is important assuming you're able to go ahead and actually get through a couple of waves which some classes cannot for those of you that don't know legion events you go in and you have to beat a certain amount of enemies in a certain amount of time to summon another wave and the amount of time you have gets lower and lower so if you can't beat a ton of monsters in a certain amount of time then you're not gonna get as much xp so the world tier events or the the open world events oftentimes were far better in fact you could see roughly about a 20 to 30 percent increase in xp however and this is a big caveat when the game comes live this is completely moot. Why? Because I was alone. I did not have anyone near me. I could run in like the ghoul circle farm that I was showcasing in my video a while back without anyone there. I could run um, the Legion events without anyone there. I could run the uh, whisper areas without anyone there. And that massively increased my XP rates because all the packs were still there. And as I moved from pack to pack, they were all spawned. I didn't have to wait for someone um, or some monster spawn etc so that means that this xp is going to be halved most likely even less than that based on my tests in beta so if that's the case the one that the things that you should be doing are dungeons period always do dungeons now what you'll notice here as well is that nightmare dungeons actually generally was about the same as every other dungeon and what this means is as long as you're able to do the nightmare dungeons as quick as the regular dungeons which most of the time you can you should be running nightmare dungeons always because that will go ahead and upgrade your glyphs your glyph sockets or your glyphs in your glyph sockets and give you the same amount of xp per minute 
So all this to say, on your way to 100, you should be doing dungeons, period. Only dungeons. And because you can't reset them instantly with a reset dungeon mechanic, the best way to do it is to follow the Tree of Whispers in order for you to get some extra loot as well as some extra XP. All of the, uh, the Tree of Whispers, because of the travel time being about a minute, keep in mind that these travel times are based on my computer and my loading speed and my travel time. If, you know, you're a little bit less laggy or, you know, you have a, we have a stable build on launch, this could be less. But the Tree of Whispers breakpoint, you know, you could see it took about a minute to get to the Tree of Whispers and it takes a minute, about a minute to get to the next dungeon, right? So if we're getting roughly about 140k XP from that Whisper, it roughly is a break-even point to, uh, compared to, you know, just continuing to farming. So it's not that much better, but it is slightly better. And that's what the whole goal of this video is, right? So the TLDR here is farm dungeons from the Tree of Whispers, and that's it. That's all you should be doing for the remainder of the game to get XP. Um, and if you can, farm Nightmare Dungeons, which will not have the Tree of Whispers, but it will give you bonus, uh, bonus loot, as well as upgrading your Glyphs, which will make you stronger to get to the higher Nightmare tiers, which will progress your experience further. Because at the end of the day, after we've gotten through our initial uh, kind of level 70 process, the ultimate goal is to reach those higher tier Nightmare Dungeons, which will increase your experience even further. Okay, if you're not level 50 by the time you reach, let's say, the end of the Renown and Strongholds, etc., run dungeons. That's it. Just run dungeons. That's uh, that's the end game. That's the mid game. That's the leveling process. The reason why is because it's going to be consistent. It's going to always give you the roughly the same amount of XP per dungeon as long as you are being consistent. And you don't have to rely on people not being in your open world area. You don't have to rely on um, uh, event spawning, etc. Everything is going to be exactly the same. Little bonus fact here before I end the video. The PvP zones are actually really good XP. The problem is, is that the PvP zones, guess what? There's going to be people PvPing in there. And if you're going to be in that zone, there's going to be more people as well. So if you can find an area and you're a good PvPer or you're a higher level, you might be able to push people out of that zone. So you might want to do PvP zones, but that's for very, very few people in the game. Hopefully that helped. I know that it was a lot of information, a lot of talking, uh, but I tried to explain the process. There's so much information in this game. And I didn't even have enough time in the review build, despite having around 10 days and playing every day uh, to chart everything that I wanted. But again, hopefully some of the numbers help out and showcase that dungeons are the best and you'll be able to level quicker that way. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like the video, sub to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one.